Harper, Larry Scarato, and Brent Hampton. Guess what, Vern? We're going to see a trap at half court. <laughs> and a long pass that is saved, then knocked out of bounds. By Trey Pinkney. Here's the star of the Stephen F. Austin team. Yeah, Thomas Walkup is a terrific player. He can do a lot of things for this team. Scoring, passing, is a real leader, the heart and soul of their team. First turnover. There will be many. <laughs> This is a team, Stephen F. Austin, that has won 20 games in a row. Backdoor cut, walk up. Stephen F. Austin has the early lead. And the way they play, they shouldn't be intimidated by a team coming from the Big 12, like West Virginia, who has played a very difficult schedule during all season long in that conference. Daxter Miles, Jr., number four. Here's Nathan Adrian. Top of the key. Gosh. Shot clock at five. Adrian goes for the offense and over the back. Walk up. Take another look at that first basket of the game. And a little setup. So you're going to be overplaying quite a bit. you got to time it perfectly. And there it is. Notice how the deep defender turned his head on the basketball and was really facing the baseline. From a per passer's perspective, Vern, that's a great time to pass the basketball because all you need to do is deliver it, not worrying about him seeing it. Here's Pinkney. Listed at 5'9", 160. Holyfield. Holyfield gets it back from Ty Charles. Lost control, gets it. Shot clock at three. Walk up, jumper. Nope. West Virginia. Who is going to play with more poise and control out of these two teams offensively? That one knocked out of bounds. Well, how about West Virginia? Let's take a look at uh, some of the statistical standouts for them. Ten steals a game, most of the NCAA offensive rebounding, very, very good. They just, they have an interesting team, and Bob Huggins knows that his personnel, they play a lot of guys, good step across there by Walkup. Demetrius Floyd. West Virginia fouls, number 23, Issa Ahmad. Issa Ahmad, number 23, with the foul for West Virginia. You know, for, for folks who are watching early on with Brad Underwood's team, you might think they're like out of control for the first minute. They're nervous. They're you know it's a rag. Tip. This is the way they play. They okay. play aggressive basketball on both ends. Not afraid to push it, but they pride themselves on their defense and really coming after people. And here's Jay Sean Page. He doesn't sit on that bench often. He's only started one game this year. He averages. 13 points per game, leads the West Virginia Mountaineers. He started at Oklahoma State. Bob Huggins told us he was really terrible. So he said, I never want to start again. He now comes off the page. Uh, off the page. <laughs> yes. Oh, that page. too. Yeah, thank you. And here's the pressure from Stephen F. Austin. Some, Vaughn Carter. Some teams are so good at pressing that almost sometimes you feel like there's a sixth or seventh guy on the floor defensively, almost like a practice set. And a foul called. Now, they, they have similar philosophies, but where do they differ defensively? Um, I, I think that, you know, it's one thing. I, with Huggins, he makes it, when you talk to him, it's relentless. He doesn't really think people play his type of defense because he does it constantly. Now you watch the way, now he's backing it off, but it's not. that doesn't mean they're going to be any less aggressive out front. Last three by Issa Ahmad. It's tied up at three. I think it plus they're bigger than Stephen F. Austin, too, Burns. So it'll be right. interesting if the bodies can wear one and wear them down. Went down, came back out. That for T.J. Holyfield. Not 
defensively, they usually are a fast-paced team, too. Walk up, trying to defend that bank shot. But unsuccessful, 5-3 now. we played almost three minutes. Trap in the backcourt. Ty Charles. And there's the jumper from the corner. Again, in and out. Nathan Adrian, number 11. Jayshon Page. Well, Stephen F. Austin out of the Southland Conference. They're in Nacogdoches, Texas. About 140 miles from Houston. Uh, Hour and 15 minutes from Shreveport, about two hours southeast of uh, Dallas. 27 and 5. They've won the last 20. And look at the record since Brad Underwood became the coach. 88 and 13. This is their fourth tournament appearance in school history. One and three, the record. Brad Underwood, two years as an assistant at Kansas State. He also played at Kansas State and graduated from the Manhattan School. Different Manhattan. That's a three. Ahmad will shoot that basketball straight on to Vern. Not afraid to take it when he gets his open shots. And there's the rattling defense. Yep. Don't see it too often with walk up. So straight on. Nobody comes out to react on the defensive effort. He's hit two threes now, right? Two threes. You know what his record was coming into this game? Two for 16. It's improved the percentage. <laughs> <laughs> I think. That's my quick map yeah, on that well, one. You know. That one's fronted. Here comes walk up for Stephen F. Austin. He's tricky with the ball. There we go. He'll go to the free throw line. You know, Brad Underwood telling us about walk up. Not highly recruited at all. Kind of a self-made player. And then walk up back-to-back -back years, consecutive years, player of the year in the Southland. Watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. Some people were in disbelief that I actually watched one of the games on my phone last night. I did. It wasn't your shoe phone, was it? <laughs> um, I'm growing into this role. <laughs> I just grew up in a simpler time. That's it. 8-5. Mountaineers. When are they going to start putting that ball in the box? Jumper. That's for three. Nope. Long rebound. Here comes. Oh, hello. Get rid of it. you got to lay it. There you go. That's the Bigs taking off. And they can run to the floor very nicely. Elijah Macon, number 45. That subs on both sides of the ball now. And look at the Bigs. I mean, it doesn't yep. matter what size you are on this team. Look at this. They're going to come right into our lap sooner or later. Yes, they they will. Will. Dallas Cameron. And a foul call. Boy, the pace is up and down. And that's, yeah, with that style, Vern, that's why you're going to get a lot of those fouls out in front. Uh, so here we go. Defensively, good action here. And the quick lob down the floor. They finish it off. That's Mountaineer basketball. City Community College to recruit Underwood's players. The two stayed in touch, and then Huggins brought in Underwood when he was at Kansas State, where Underwood, like you mentioned earlier, played basketball. Then he would establish himself as an assistant coach and eventually get a head coaching position. So the two go back a long time. Underwood and, and Coach Huggins had a lot of fun yesterday after practice with uh, Underwood even photobombing Huggins during the little media session. He said he doesn't like to face Huggins because he knows how hard his players play for him, but it's great to see him again. Indeed. Thank you, Alex. Jumper. That's Clyde Gaffar, number 11, a senior, who was a starter, now comes off the bench. I thought it was interesting also, Ali, the fact that Upton would really just said, I don't like playing friends. Yeah. I don't like going up against friends. And 
And once the game begins, they're really not friends until it's over. A little pressure from Bahan and from Holyfield, number 22. I think Williams has to slide down and use that body strength. That one tipped out. Williams has it. Nice backdoor pass. Beautiful. Yeah, it really was. And Page just sat on the baseline waiting for it. But Williams strong enough to get into the middle of the lane, get that ball. I think they could post him up a couple of times to get his touches. At least that's what Huggins thought, was, thought he was going to do yesterday when we spoke to him. Look at Williams work defensively. <laughs> I was just thinking he's 6'8". Six, he's, six, he's out yeah. there doing the same thing the guards are. There we go. Loose ball. Possession arrow pointing towards Stephen F. Austin. So Vern, here, here you look at it, just getting into the middle of the lane eventually with the basketball and look at all the purple shirts. They're just surrounding the big guy and that's why he was able to dump it down like you mentioned. Walk up will inbound. He is a senior out of Pasadena, Texas. Oof, nice play. Look yep, at this. Watch lane. out. Terrific. And a foul. You don't generally see guys jump on the inbounds pass and try to do what he just did defensively. Uh, but. West Virginia's M.O. is just constantly. Now, this ball is thrown high because it has to be to get by the initial defender down in the backcourt. But a pretty finish by Miles Jr. with the strength. And that will put him at the line. You know, going back to that question that you mentioned earlier, talking about the differences of these two sure. teams. Merwin. One thing Huggins did say is people say they play our style, and he said they think they do, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think they do. Many teams do not play this with their bigs tracking the ball. There's a layup. If they hurry, not the flexible ball. Flexible. Daxter Miles Jr. got it. And they pride themselves on the deflections. No question about that. Watch how tough it is to get this ball in balance, Herm. That's Jonathan Fulton defending the inbound pass. It's just not yes. as easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're fronting walk up, and there's another turnover. Oh, wow. A double wow. Yeah, that really is. Now they got numbers if they hurry. From the corner, no. Clyde Gaffard. Little arm there. And a foul is called. He'll shoot free throws. West Virginia foul is number four. So you get the defensive effort. Here's the double. You're not a double team, but you know, you get a single guy stripping it, and the second guy's in there, and off to the races. A pretty good effort, though, clearly by Stephen F. Austin with Holyfield going upstairs to block that shot. One more. Gaffard averaging 13 points per game, 26 times this year in double figures. And he came off the bench in their championship game, too. Vernon put up a quick nine, so he's not afraid to take his shots. He's not afraid to mix it up offensively. He'll down get a rest. 22. Holyfield is back on for him. And Javon Carter will inbound the ball now for West Virginia. Mountaineers came in 23 and 8 for the year, 13 and 5 in arguably the toughest basketball conference in the country. Maybe not even arguably. No, I put them right at the top. I mean, there if you if there is an easy game on the road in that conference, I'd like to hear about it. From the corner, nope. Well, rebound Demetrius Floyd. Five point margin. This is Pinkney. Guarded by Dexter Miles, number four. Can't really hold on to the ball that long against West Virginia. It's one of the ways to break it. Make sure it's moving. Guys are moving without the basketball with screens. Four on the shot clock. Got to be aware of it. That's not the shot he wanted. He was closely guarded. Ty Charles almost got it back for the Lumberjacks. Tariq Phillip calls for it. Knocked out of bounds. 
12.04 to go. Your teams, your highlights, your scores all in one place. Download TeamStream, the free app from Bleacher Report, now. Into the corner, three. That's the way you keep the ball hot, but that's for sure. And Holt can shoot it once in a while from there. He's not a great shooter at 23%, but when he gets clean looks, he's a little bit better than contested. Beautifully. Walk up, one touch pass into the middle, and the ball slammed home by Holyfield. So now Stephen F. Austin has to remember what they just did then to beat that first wave of the trap. Nice pass. And a foul. Here's the beautiful pass from Walkup to Holyfield time call. Own the detour. Martin, Bob Huggins, and Brad Underwood, 2006 and 7 at Kansas State. They look like they're ready to go in that picture, don't yeah, they? You bet. <laughs> Well, Bob Huggins went home after that one year at Kansas State. He had served, of course, at Walsh, Akron, Cincinnati, Kansas State for one year, and he took the job in his hometown and his alma mater because he said he knew that was going to be his last chance to get to Morgantown. Jumper. Nope. Carter. That's for three. Here comes the pace. Yes. One, one. Now it's got to be go. Oh, no. No. Oh. All right. Did that get to the glass just then? That's going to be a foul on Ty Charles. Let us take another look. Well, maybe it was. Not one of Let's see, it's going up, it's going up. You know what? Good call. Yeah, it really was. Yep. I think it was going on the, on the way up, and I don't think it hit the glass either until the defender hit it into the glass. And keep in mind, he didn't have a chance to look at replay like we did. Well, that's why these officials are so good, Bert. I mean, you know, people will criticize them and once in a while. Yeah, let's take another look at this, and it was a bang-bang play. Did it really? Hit well, if, the it, glass? if it hits the glass and it's above the rim, that should have been goaltending. It's once again, it's difficult to even on the replays determine whether that hit the glass. That's a second foul on Charles, by the way. Here's the pressure in the backcourt. Walkup, just barely getting it over. Yeah, two seconds to spare. Demetrius Floyd, number one. Here's Walkup. Walkup. High screen. He splits it, kicks it in the corner, jumper, got it. Well done. Yeah, it sure was because Walkup has that ability and to almost to play the point position as a guy who plays it. Like, he plays all different positions for this team, so it's hard to really just stamp him as a certain type of player other than a good player and well-rounded well player. Nearing the midway point of the first half, there's another turnover. Demetrius Floyd saves it, gets it in the hands of Trey Pinckney. Another one. You see, now they're figuring it out a little bit, Vern. What you want to do when they come at a team traps and pressures you, if you have to be under control with this, make your first pass past the first two or three guys, and then you have numbers. Look at this. Look at walk up, running, and making the steal into the corner. That's for three. No, not this time. And Gaffard had to get back. He was in danger of committing a foul. These guys just pull up their shorts and get ready to play defense, <laughs> don't they? Right in front. Oh, gosh. Floyd ready to go. Daxter Miles, number four, has the ball. Here's Floyd. Look at Walker play defense. Put it down on the floor. <laughs> yep. Do not put that on the floor. I can tell you that from over here. Here come the Lumberjacks. 
Dallas Kemp, uh, smart, yeah. smart by Walkup. He, he ran, he, he initiated that contract, contact with the defender on the move. Foul is on Holton, that's his first. You see how he slid right into him just then to get to the free throw line. And then he's going to have some trouble. He splits this line here. And then once you get by the traps, Vern, did you notice now all of a sudden it's a two-on-one in the corners spread out. So you're trying against the press to make sure you're constantly in the half court once you get by it, looking for advantages, two-on-ones, three-on-twos, even if the court is short. Bob, Bob Huggins sends four new players on. And uh, Brent Underwood sends two. See, I think with these, the way these guys play it, I think it's unfair that they have to wait for the whistle to be blown. They should just let them go on the fly, back and forth. There should be a new rule with this game. A little hockey coming over the glass. Yeah. And off you Line go. change. Yep, there you go. Eight unanswered now by Stephen F. Austin. They have pulled within one. Tariq Phillips. Little jump stop. Ooh. Get caught up on all of today's action now with CBS Sports app. Check your bracket, watch highlights, and get expert analysis of your team's matchup. Download the CBS Sports app now. And maybe that site will explain how Middle Tennessee beat Michigan State today. Wow. We just had something you don't see that often, a line violation. Ah. That's the offensive player. He's going... I didn't see him step on the line, though. Nope. He pointed to the line, the official. Here's walk up from Pinkney. And they called him for a violation, a walking violation without the main hoop. That is a blocking foul. No, it's not. It is uh, an offensive foul. And Page coming right into him. The hold in his ground pretty nicely. Was Williams defensively? Yes. Uh, I think both of these teams have been successful in frustrating one another. But right now, Stephen F. Austin Vern has, has kind of hit a little bit of fuel. That's a bad place to put that ball in that corner. You can't get away with that. Loose ball. Hell ball or a foul? They're still wrestling. Vern, I'll tell you one thing. When you see a loose ball tonight, yeah. be careful. <laughs> They're going to be all over the court. And what was it? Three, four guys who were in that loose ball. But that entry pass at a deep corner. Right. Hell ball. When you pass the ball into that corner, the sideline and the baseline become almost like two defenders because you can't go either direction, especially if it's a strong close. Possession arrow pointing toward West Virginia. They'll inbound. <laughs> oh. right. Miss from point blank. Here come the Lumberjacks. C.J. Williams, number two. We'll keep that ball Good moving. Good ball moving. He's back. No. That was a miss from Jared Johnson, number three. Here's Jashon Page. Get it inside. A little too hard with the pass. But back is good. Issa Ahmad. Issa Ahmad with another basket. Seven thirty-seven. 37 remaining first half. Players, Stephen F. Austin has countered with nine. It tends to keep us on our feet over here. It really does. You have to pay attention to both of these teams because they're moving guys in and out a lot. They go after one another, and they track the deflections. Five and four steals. It's just a funny way to play, a, play the game, and it's just so up-tempo. But I think, you know, West Virginia, if they, if they can play this, I think their strength plays into their their positive side of the way they play it. But you know what? Stephen F. Austin is matching them right now and frustrating. Yeah, they sure are. Well, that was the senior Pinkney. 
Misfiring. On the free throw, here's Tariq Philippe. Philip. Yep. I guess too many eeks and leaks. <laughs> Let's go to Allie. Mark and Jim, you guys nailed it by talking about the turnovers. Coach Huggins was so furious. You could hear him all the way up in the stand saying nine turnovers. Nine turnovers. He said it about nine times to his team to make sure they got that through his head. That 13 of Stephen F. Austin's 19 points have come off of those turnovers. He said one way to avoid it is to keep ball movement going, to move on offense, to make those extra cuts, to try to get open so you don't have to force that pass. Okay. That was Huggins yelling, huh? I thought that we heard him over here, too. Yeah, huh? I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's right, though. You better be more careful with the basketball. C.J. Williams, and that's tipped out. Three-point West Virginia lead. Long pass, tipped out of bounds. The NCAA tournament and Coke. Team up for great taste. It took us a while because the audio is not quite that prominent in our headsets. But then we realized there's a little fizzle. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a little sizzle on this one, Vern, at the defensive end at least. You know, we just saw a long pass, you know, about half court pass going for the layup. Unless you know your guy has a good five feet in, in out running the opposition, you better not try a pass like that. More times than not, you'll get a guy coming back, a safety, almost like a cornerback going after the ball in the football. See the effort defensively by Gaffard. Up in the air, up in the air again. Oh, what a nice pump fake. And there's Walker. Boxing out. Look at split two guys. Yes, he did. Here's Pinkney, the senior. Gaffard. They're going both sides of the floor now. This is that is a way to attack a real hardcore pressure defense. Swing the ball as soon as you catch it. Put it on the deck and go back towards the middle. Deshaun Page defensively on walk up. Five on the shot clock. Trap from the corner. Pinkney. One in the shot clock. Yeah, they didn't leave it. I don't know what the paint he was in the way. Yeah, he's going. My fault. Yep. My fault. You know, I don't have a problem with guys trying to make an extra pass. Now, obviously, this is a mistake because he has to shoot it this far down. But if he caught this ball with five seconds, I wouldn't have a problem scooting it across because a guy could see the clock. He understood that the ball's coming to him and he has to shoot it. Unfortunately, you know, the good teams understand how to play the shot clock from five and under. That was just a fraction too late, though. Rebound. And another foul. Yeah, that one's coming up into the face. Yeah. Foul is on Deshaun Page. C.J. Williams uh, poked in the right eye. Look at that monitor, too, with the, uh, with the, the summary, I should say. Number 15, Middle Tennessee. Number two, Michigan. All right, folks, how many had that at yeah. home? Yeah. <laughs> Talk about the ultimate bracket buster. Well, we all thought, A, it would be a wide-open tournament this year, but I don't think any of us saw the results that we saw yesterday and today. C.J. Williams, one more shot. Yeah, I don't think that was a punch in the gut to Michigan State for the brackets, Burn. I think that was a big old haymaker. Ooh. That broke up a lot of people. Williams, only a 53% free throw shooter, and you see why. Right, there you go. It's hard to hit that right side of the rim. Calls timeout, the double team in the corner. 5.57 to go. First half, 22-19, West Virginia. ECU and the NCAA tournament, they decided Dream Big isn't good enough. We want to dream even bigger. We want to make it farther the next time around. So they had these shirts made, and the guys wear them throughout the day just as a reminder of what they accomplished and what they still hope to accomplish. All right, Ellie, thank you. Allie, do I see a Dream Biggest shirt come Ooh. next year? Ooh, could be. Here's Walker. Number zero, Thomas Walker. No, oh, beautiful. Oh, my gosh. That was terrific. It sure was. Away from the action, and you have the best passer probably in their league making that pass over the top. Well-designed play after a break. Gaffard has nine points now. That assist from Walker, and it's a one-point game yet again. 
Look at Gaffard fight for that. Number 11. Here's Walker again. Outside, that's for three. Nope. Are well, they going to get Jonathan Holton? Is that right? I think. Yes. Previous possession. And watch the action away from the ball. So you have a guy who can handle it. And there's the follow-up in terms of the finish over the top. C.J. Williams on the left. The forward with the finish. Walk up with the pass. Now that puts C.J. Williams back on the line. He missed his last two badly. Catching that little hitch in his shot. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Is that coachable? Mm, yeah, but you got to do drills to fix that one. I see. You know, it's a, it's a hitch. It's kind of like right in the, watch yeah. the middle of his arm, the elbow. It's kind of like a quick elbow up, and then he doesn't. It's not one fluid motion. And that one, he actually shot through it better because the arm and the arm snap, the elbow snap much better. I saw him look over here at you and said, "Oh, I heard your critique." Yeah, be quiet, you. I'm getting, I'm trying to shoot my free throws. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets a spot on the bench, and we are tied, 22 all. This is a a heck of a matchup between two teams with a lot of tenacity. Adrian. And guarded by Walker. And two styles where each of these teams probably didn't want the other team in the matchup. Yeah. You know, Carter, bounce pass. Foul on the way up. First round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship begins today on ESPN2. And watch ESPN. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. That was the first foul on Walker, and that sends Williams to the line. Junior, 6'9", 255. Healthy lad. I remember the little surprise, he hasn't been getting more direct touches. Uh, but the perimeter pressure on the guards has made that much more difficult to even get the ball into his hands. I must say, Stephen F. Austin has done an impressive job with this pressure. Yep. They're going off the top. Now, this is where you can get in trouble if you try dribbling towards another defender. So he goes away, his man runs away, and they get an opening. It's the little places on the floor that Bob Huggins' team will sneak up on you if you're not ready on them. Skip pass, nice one touch pass out. And the rebound from Williams. He's averaging nine rebounds per game. Four oh three to go, first half. And the foul on the uh, on the drive. Foul is on Demetrius Floyd. Three fifty nine to go. Time call. Alexa, ask Domino's for my easy order. Ordering Domino's. Smith, the nice where he's had three assists, just looking over things. And once again, at his size, the ability to make good decisions with the basketball. Six points, three rebounds, three assists. And at the other end, at the line, Javon Carter. That breaks the tie. Right. It had already been broken. Thank you, pardon. Third game blues. Mm. <laughs> two for two this trip for Javon Carter, the sophomore from suburban Chicago. And it, on a missed free throw, it really gives them out. See what they're going to do. Well, they're extending it. Now they half of them are dropping back. And now they go for it. And a foul. Well, we'll wait in just a moment ago. We showed you this photo on the left, Frank Martin, Bob Huggins, and Brad Underwood. For more, 
Here's Alice. Well, Vern, Frank Martin took notice, and he got on Twitter. You're not the only one on Twitter these days. <laughs> and he wrote, those are my brothers. Very cool. He's following the game. That's nice. Nice to hear from Frank. Yeah. A little intensity in those three guys, too, as coaches, don't you think? Don't you think? think. Look at this guy. Hey, he's a lovable huggy. Oh, he's terrific. Yeah, he but really is. And uh, his dad, Charlie, mm -hmm. legendary coach in Ohio, is going into the coaches, high school coaches Hall of Fame in Ohio this weekend. Correct. And then the Ohio Hall of Fame, basketball Hall of Fame, in March, later in uh, in the spring. Beg your pardon. And Charlie won three state titles, two at one school, one or the other, and Bob was a standout for him in high school. Eight. That's going to go the other way. And it is, yes. And Bob, obviously, very, very proud of the accomplishments of his father. So, congratulations to Mr. Huggins. Foul is on Adrian. 26-23. Vern, check the foul trouble out already. Oof. It's kind of like, who doesn't have two on this team so far? And they're just going to mount up. And we, we knew that was going to be a concern, and that's where their depth will commit to play. Pinkney trap. Let's step through. Yes, it was. There's the pass you have to make to release it. Jumper, no. But look at Walkup chase it down. Knew exactly where that rebound was going to come. And part of that is understanding where the shots are going to come from. Jumper for three. Again, no good. How does he get that one? My God. How does he get that one out of there? Two West Virginia players upstairs pulling it down, and he figures out a way to catch it about waist high on the way down. He's not out jumping people, but he can you can out angle people and out smart people to position yourself. There they go. Whoa, what's going on back there? That's, I don't know. They may have to. There's a little action. I think the officials missed the action down low. Checking in for West Virginia, number zero, Tavon Myers. I thought Adrian, I, I couldn't tell who went flying into the official there for a second. Nope. But I thought Adrian pushed on the lower left side. Yeah, you see, he can't do that. He can't. It's, it's kind of like an offensive guard blocking somebody. Hmm. So a review at the uh, scoring table. Take one more look. And you take a look right in here. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. yeah I caught that. And that's, you look at the officials, you know, it's it's just an unusual play, right? It's not a basketball play. It'll be interesting to see how they, they interpret this one over at the monitor. Going to have another look. Watch Adrian with the shove right there. So, you know, they can go over to that monitor and determine whether it's a flagrant one, which would be excessive or unnecessary. My guess, that's going to be unnecessary. Okay. And you might be able to slide excessive on it, too. Well, here's the rules and the interpretation of the rules. Excessive contact of pushing, holding a player from behind to prevent the score. Take a look at the right-hand side. And the explanation is coming up here in just a second. And we're getting the explanation of it right now. There's another look. And lower right-hand side, you could see Adrian with the shove. Okay. I think you yeah. dead got ball. the explanation. Yep. Right? Dead ball because the ball was going through the basket, which makes it a little different. And two shots will be taken. 
and they will be taken by walk-up, and that is the third foul on Adrian. His walk-up at the line. Got a forgiving roll then. He's 80% from the line for the year. So here is his second. And just and another to, one. To clarify, Vern, that's a dead ball, not a flagrant one. Okay. Dead ball call. Got a little perspiration on the floor, so we're going to get out and dry that up. Mm -hmm. To me, though, when you look at those concepts, you know, dead balls and also the flagrant ones, generally they kind of stand out as, you know, you've seen enough basketball over the years to see whether or not a play is a normal play in the, in the game of basketball. So does a guy, is a guy able to put two arms up and push a guy out of bounds like that? No. So you know something has to be called. It's just a matter of the interpretation that ball going through the hoop puts it in the dead ball category. That's a tough way to get on camera time. Yeah, I wish I could get my kids to clean the kitchen floor like that, Vern. Now, we're told now it wasn't just perspiration, that there was a little blood on the floor. So. Oh, okay. Coming up at the half, the AT&T at the half, scores and highlights. Boy, if you haven't been with us today, there is a lot of tournament news. And I'm sure the lead will be Middle Tennessee State over Michigan State. Uh, another foul call. Pinkney seemed to be going down. But was he going down because somebody put a foot in his path? Well, that could have been. A little bit, yeah. Yep, look at the leg action. Yeah. Don't look above the waist on that foul. Look below. Generally, these guys nowadays are so athletic, especially the guards, Burn. They just don't fall down by themselves usually. There's usually a reason why they hit the floor, especially in the open court. Like that type of play, not going to the basket. Well, Pinkney, one more. Got it. Twenty-eight twenty-six. This is the first time that Stephen F. Austin has led since they were up three nothing. Two twenty-three to go, first half. Tavon Myers, and there's Walker. Block his way. Shot clock at five. Seems to be some derision in, in the response. Of the West Virginia fans, yeah. at least. Yeah, they're standing and applauding. That is the second foul on Thomas Walker. Isa Ahmad at the line opened this game for West Virginia with two threes, which doubled his number of made threes for the season. Gets the first free throw. Did you hear what I heard? Yes, I did. No. It wasn't a concession stand guy either. No, it wasn't. What's a lollipop? Who wants a lollipop? <laughs> I didn't expect to hear that here in the first half. Allie? I wouldn't mind a lollipop. <laughs> Send one over here. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been directed at the officials. <laughs> Oh, another turnover. Another turnover. I don't think we're getting a camera in the uh, West Virginia locker room at the half on this one tonight. I don't think so. <laughs> Bob Huggins with the hands on hips off the stool, and that is a look of sheer disgust mm -hmm. right now. Seven on the shot clock. Oh, Walker knocked his own man down. Two on the shot clock. Good if it goes and it doesn't. Uh, look, good luck. Great out with pass. But look at the speed defensively. Yeah. Stephen F. Austin just not giving that little layup up. Look at Payton. And the reaction to the perimeter has been good, too. Walker. Final minute, first half. I guess so. You better get back in a hurry. Yes! 
because you can see it developing from the back. And, you know, walk-up is so good passing. They're running the outsides. They're getting to the lanes. And they use that three-point line, Vern. I mean, the old days, we used to go in for layups on those plays. Now they pull up. That was well-designed. Williams, wide open, won't uh, fall. And there is Gaffard with a rebound. Final 30 seconds. Stephen F. Austin, the 14 seed, leads by three. And I've been waiting to say this all half. They don't have a foul to give. <laughs> <laughs> Walk up, 10 on the shot clock, about a one-second differential. No play for what is essentially the final. Oh, oh it's re rejected. Floater, no. Keep playing. Yes! No, no, they waved it off. They waved it off immediately. Here comes a loose ball. <laughs> After that first half performance, but I asked him what he told his team, and he said, we simply got outmanned. I asked him how he addressed the turnovers. He said, that's simply what we've been doing lately. And I said, so how do you overcome them? And he said, I don't know, make a shot, get a rebound, do something positive. Yeah. And on top of that, Allie, I would not wait until the last five minutes against this team if that strategy is going to be put in place because they're doing that. They're getting in the way a whole lot. So I would not let this game get under five minutes if I were West Virginia. Thirteen turnovers now for West Virginia. Here's walk-up. Only one of four in the first half. Upstairs. Oh, he missed it. But how about the rebound? And the putback. And it's a five point Stephen F. Austin lead. Holy feel with that follow up burn. And once again, it's that just a little attention to detail. And it's there for Stephen F. Austin and maybe lacking a touch for West Virginia. Walking foul. Holy feel. That's his third. See if Brad Underwood makes a move here. Not so far. Bob Huggins just really trying to get his team to figure it out. Short, walk up, battles for it, rebound West Virginia. And they got Holton in there too. He's got some size at 6 7. Carter for three. Off the mark. I think this is going to stay down this end. Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. That was a quick fourth foul on Holyfield. So he is out. Gaffard is back on. Ty Charles is out there. Walker. Pinkney. And Floyd inbounds. Hmm. Missed everything. Uh, from point blank range, also. Yeah. And Stephen F. Austin only blocks four shots a game, Vern, so I wouldn't really be concerned about that. I'd be more concerned about putting the ball on the floor with the traffic defensively. Gaffard kicks it into the corner. Pinkney back outside. Here's Walker. Bounce pass. Walker fights for it, doesn't get it. No numbers here for West Virginia. And Aaron's on the floor again. Here we go. Yeah. Offense. You know what's interesting, Vern? When there's a loose ball and guys pick it up and you retain the basketball, don't you generally get a good shot off a broken play? Here's an offensive foul because he pushes that right arm out. Phillip Phillip does. But even when the loose ball is gathered by West Virginia, Stephen F. Austin is just so good at recovering that they don't get an open shot on a broken play. Well, you get a sense of why they have won 20 in a row. And for the third consecutive year, they're 16-2 and two in Southland Conference play. This is a very good and well-coached basketball team. Walk up. Got it! That's for three. Extend the lead to eight.
I think you better start getting some screens off the ball. It's going to be outside before the shot. No basket. And one team is just playing under control. And walk-up recognizes nobody's going to stop him from shooting the basketball just then. And his decisions, as we mentioned in the first half, you know, at one point in the first two minutes of this second half, Burn, I thought the strategy was going to be for West Virginia shoot the basketball and then have three guys just go to the offensive glass and just try to corral it. Falling down as he makes the shot. But uh, West Virginia gets it back. Look at these guys. West Virginia does retain possession. Now, as a player, Vern, that, that, when that ball came off the backboard just then, right here, you're thinking, okay, I have the ball, and I'm going to get somewhere with it. No, you're not. Not the way these guys play. They just keep coming after you. If you think you have an easy one, you're mistaken. Jonathan Holton. Jumper, Phillip. In and out, offensive board. Elijah Macon, number 45, and a foul called on the Lumberjacks. Foul is on Dallas Cameron. That's four quick team fouls. Mm -hmm. Bob Huggins continues to have his guys to just attack. they got to be careful with the long ball, with the layup that they might get give up if they don't get the rebounds. But don't bring it down. Here we go. This might be one right here. Yep. Beauty. See, that's, that's what happens when you crash the boards. You crash the boards with five guys, you better make sure you get the basketball because these guys are quick to look up the floor at one another. Yeah, you better come out on the floor if you're Brad Underwood and start cheering for your guys. And T, let's go back to Brooklyn. All right, Ernie, thank you. And here we got West Virginia trailing Stephen F. Austin. Look at this. 15 force turnovers, 25 points off of those turnovers. Devin Williams, mm -hmm. he keeps catching it at the foul line. I'd like to see him catch it on the blocks. The foul is called on Floyd. That's his second. And the team's fifth already. Yeah, Vernon, we're not even at the 16-minute mark. Well, it's 38-28. Look at this. Another turnover. Trap. Walk up. Gaffard. West Virginia has gone almost 15 minutes with one field goal. Nice hands. They should get one here, but look at the... Oh, there they go. And that wasn't an easy layup either, Vern. No, no, no. <laughs> that was well defended, though, out there. And this gives them finally a chance to put their press on. Javon Carter had the basket. Here comes Walkup. Walkup knows how to dribble the ball up the floor. Just enough dribbles. Then he senses it, and he gives it up when he's going to get double teamed. Demetrius Ford, number one, picked up by Jonathan Holton, number one. Jumper. Now, if you're West Virginia, you need to get a good shot here. Don't hurry. Don't rush yourself. Make sure you execute. And once again, look at Williams. Get him on the blocks once in a while. Another miss from close range. Always fun to watch play. Walk up, that is. Mm -hmm. Pull up jumper. No. Gets his own rebound. And a foul. Thirty-eight thirty. Thomas Walkup, six four senior from Pasadena, Texas. Touch on iPhone 6s responds to the pressure of your finger, so you can do a ton of stuff. And she's up there. Yeah. And I may just leave for a few minutes. <laughs> you want to put an order, and I'll get something for you and Allie while I'm up there. I might do that. There's Walkup missing from the free throw line. 
one of the few things he's not done well. 38-30. See what they do up nine defensively now. Where do they wait for West Virginia? Okay, here's... Just a straight-up man-to-man look. Yeah. No real hard pressure. That's and Dallas Cameron defending. C.J. Williams is back out. He's got Williams. It's Williams on Williams. I know there's a joke there, but... There you go. There's the catch. And you get to the line. Devin Williams from Cincinnati. So finally he gets the ball and he catches it and smartly goes to the baseline side because his defender is sitting on his power side in the middle of the lane. You know what I keep thinking to Vern with West Virginia, what they continue to go through. When you play a normal game of basketball, you think, all right, this guy's open on the wing. I can make that pass. And it's in your mind, it's a relatively easy pass. But a compliment to Stephen F. Austin is that simple pass in basketball that you normally see, they don't think it's a simple pass. They go out and attack it. And I'm, not, I'm still not sure that West Virginia has gotten it into their minds that these guys will contest every single thing you do. Got them both. And that cuts the margin to seven. No question what Bob Huggins is going to have his team do. They're going to try to look for a trap. Williams on Williams at the other end. Now Walker. Nice. Oh, hello, goodbye. I have a friend who's working in another location who would say, a little lingerie on the deck. Exactly. Oh, my. <laughs> Walk up now has 16. Williams calls for it. Jump stop. Up, around, out. Look at Walk up. Here we go. Four, yeah. Call timeout, isn't he? Yep. And so we'll take a look at him. Just very patient, little head fake, shoulder fake, and you know what? That's way too easy. I mean, I know he's a very good player. And here's one of our favorite plays, the loose ball. Go get it, guys. Time called, West Virginia. After the timeout, here's Walkup who hit the deck again. He spent a lot of time on the floor tonight. And a stacked eye formation in football terms. Here you go. Very good call. <laughs> Ball inbounded. Uh, cheap foul. Jared Johnson. And as Gary Danielson would say, they got to go with the long ball once in a while here, Vern, to break it up. By the way, Gary is watching. He's babysitting the grandkids today. Oh. Well, he did this afternoon. He said he had a, a party of 11 at home in Bonita Springs, Florida. Do you think Gary is still up right now? He might be in sound asleep after that afternoon. He's probably getting ready for a golf <laughs> match tomorrow. Good for him. <laughs> Now, Brad Underwood made one change here, and at the line. Good. Tariq Phillip. See, I'm starting to sense, you know, that Stephen F. Austin is almost in the position. They're going to continue what they're doing. But I'm thinking that West Virginia's believe, and I think Huggins in that last timeout was probably in their head saying, listen, we're going to break these guys. Let's try to go out in the next three or four minutes and break them. And if you're over on the other side, you're going to say, be patient. Continue to do what you've been doing. We're, we're, we're handling this pressure very, very well. So now which one of these two teams is going to mentally put it together in the last 13 and a half minutes or so? We went for the steal. Didn't get it. A small guy with a big guy guard, and that's all is he ever. Wow. Well, it's pretty good work there. Eight on the shot clock. Good defense on Walker. And he is hit as he starts to fall. And a foul is going to be called. Thomas Walker. Foul is called on 
Page. They love to watch him play. Three times in their Southland tournament. Three straight years, he was the MVP in consecutive years. Doesn't happen too often, but you can see why with the way he plays. Now, this year they defeated Houston Baptist and then won the championship by ousting AM Corpus Christi. They have won the Southwest Conference Championship four consecutive years. Did Brad undo what the coach tell us yesterday? I like to win, and I want to win. Walk up. Makes it. That's a good call. It's going to be a block. Yes. And defensively, just slides in underneath them. A little closer than I thought the first look. A good call from the officials. And Walkup is at the line. That's the third foul on Holton. Walkup with 16 points. Got it. Well, Brad Underwood was telling us yesterday he never gave up on his dream of becoming a Division I head coach. When he was invited and he got the job at 49, he said he had a meeting with the athletic director, the president of the university, and the chairman of the board of regents. And he said, you know what? It's a beautiful place, and they take this sport very seriously here. Well, He's been a great fit. Yeah, and just to have those three people in the room tells you something about the decision-making process at the school and how important that decision was for them. And he recognized that and appreciated it. That's going to be on Stephen F. Austin. You know, West Virginia is going to should be able to shoot a ton of fouls from the 13-minute mark, mark on right now because that's number eight against Stephen F. Austin. And that's the fourth on Charles. Uh, Trey Pinckney had a brief rest, and Charles will head to the bench with four fouls. And Tariq Phillip at the line. And Charles has had a... Tough evening, too, not scoring. He's had three games this season where he's got over 19 points. And look at this number of free throw attempts, and you expect that to climb before this is over. I would think with 13.05, that would be a number to look at. Philip guarding Pinkney. There looks as a trap. Good call. He does get it across, but barely. Oh, wow. And walk up saves it back outside. Let's go to the half court set. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath is what you need to do if you're Stephen F. Austin on this trip. That's not getting in there. Nope. That's a tough angle for a lob. From the corner, Gaffard. Nope. And here come the Mountaineers. Yeah, I think this is their next two minutes, Vern. You can just see them playing a little bit more. I think that's going to go, too. There was an initial bump outside that was not called. And you just keep going to the basket and play it the whole way. See, here's a bump there, and there's another bump. And the foul goes on number zero, Walker, and that's his third. So, uh, Page at the line. Can you sense that feeling with I, West I Virginia can, a little yes, bit? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yep. Especially if you put down a free throw. And they've got one more. to come get him. Watch I think there's the trap again. Watch for the third guy. The third guy has to stop any good pass, and he just did, so they couldn't attack from the corner. Here's Pinkney. 12-13 to go. Walk up. Draws the foul. So when you come around it, Vern, you make the first pass, you get rid of this one. If you get that in there, then you have to make sure you go quickly from that point on because there are three guys coming to really close you down. And they do, and they get it into their guy's hand, and he ends up at the free throw line because he understands how to use his body to get to the line. Walk up is 9 of 10. 
at the free throw line tonight to make it Cannibal 11. Devin Williams will get a rest for the Mountaineers now as walk up shoots one more. Jonathan Holton number one on. And C.J. Williams is getting ready to reappear for the Lumberjacks. Smooth shooter, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is. I, you know, you asked Brad Underwood yesterday, okay, you're a mid-major. Mm -hmm. If you take walk up and put him in the Big 12, how would he play? And he said he... he spoke very very highly of him he said this this kid could play anywhere he wants and yep. I, I tend to agree with him he he's got the talent and he's got a terrific understanding of how to play the game almost lost it walk up gets a rest now with 20 points there's a little shove and a rejection by cj williams whoa big fella here comes pinkney the little fella the big fella was running the floor too look at yeah. layup <laughs> Eleven forty-two to go. Six point. Stephen F. Austin margin. Back outside, four of the shot clock. Jumper. No. Tariq Phillip has it now for West Virginia. They're down by six. Eleven twenty to go. It's a three against a fourteen. Quick hands. Clyde Griffard. 11-13 in the ballgame. Found Brad Underwood saying that he could play just about anywhere. If I were coach, I'd take this kid right immediately. Now here is West Virginia. Oh, boy. Another turnover. Huggins out the pass. Wow. It's over the top. Every mistake Stephen F. Austin makes from a fouling perspective, Vern is going to cost him at the other, at other end of the line. With the line. Well, West Virginia is going to go to the line where they have hit 14 of 15. Who's going to make the most shots? Who has more points in the second half? If your bracket's already busted, and I would guess almost 99.7% of you have busted brackets, play the Capital One NCAA tournament game on NCAA.com and in the March Madness Live app. That is the 10th team foul. So just by attrition alone, if they keep hitting these free throws, they're going to carve into this lead. Sure uh, will. Yep. And you and I might get a chance to play tonight with all the fouls being called. Somebody's going to foul out sooner or later here. We just got word that, according to CBSSports.com, mm -hmm. there are zero perfect brackets on their site. Wow. <laughs> um, well, we're not surprised, but no. it's... I could do a burn wow on that one. 45-41. <laughs> Four-point game. Oh, nicely done. It sure was. He backed up the dribble. You don't see that that often. Bring it back away from the defenders. Smart move. They just barely got it over, though. Watch the elbows. 10.42 to go. 10 on the shot clock. Somebody deflected that. Learn the concept of don't rush into anything. Pull the ball back, and what that does is it allows you to step through and see the court better, and it gives your guys time to get to a point on the floor where you can see it, see him, and then catch it also at the same time. Eight on the shot clock. Jumper. Nope. That might have been tipped. I'm not sure. It certainly was contested. Yeah, I, th I think it was, and I think West Virginia is making a statement. Watch out. <laughs> so is Stephen F. Austin. Ouch. That's a good foul. Great uh -huh. train coming. I just, I'm, I'm watching the respective benches. And these Stephen F. Austin kids, every time something positive happens, they're up and applauding. And I know that, that West Virginia is making a run now and a comeback, but you don't sense it from the guys who are not on the floor. Fourth foul on Holton. Oops. Number three, 
Nathan Adrian is on from West Virginia. Look at the numbers on walk, walk up. 11 for 12. The rest of the team, 6 of 14. You happen to have a 81% free throw shooter at the line. Got it. I think it's safe to say that every single point in this one, I mean, West Virginia may be down five, but you can say it about both of these teams, Vern. Neither one of them are going out of here without a good fight. 10 15 to go in the ballgame. And already West Virginia is in the double bonus 46 41. Tariq Phillip woke up defending. That's for three. Put back is good. Yeah, they are putting it up on the glass, and their concept right now is we're shooting and we're going to the offensive glass, and if they get a break down the other end, so be it. Well, let's take a look at Devin Williams on the offensive board. And when you shoot the ball from long range, if you have good rotation on it, it generally sits up on the rim a little longer, and it doesn't kick out long, and that allows their bigs to hit the offensive glass. So that's why you analyze these things so well. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's <laughs> pay attention once in a while. Yeah. Bench warning for West Virginia. Jay Sean Page getting ready to come back in. Not the offensive force we expected so far tonight. Dallas Cameron at the line. This game is being played so aggressively. Burn, I don't know if you saw that. I did see it. Did you see after, Miles? Yes. Box out the shooter? Yes. After the free throw, <laughs> it was almost going in. And all of a sudden, Cameron got knocked off. Cameron's off. coming our direction. <laughs> Holy cow. Watch this again. There you go. A little great. less aggressively than boxing out the shooter. I've never seen a guy get knocked off the line before. Watch this, Burn. My guess is he's going to end up about there. Boom. <laughs> Further. I was only off by three feet. Oh. That's on a free throw. Be careful. Into the corner. Adrian gets it back outside. Five-point margin. That's for three. All right, uh, a little shove. I think they got C.J. Williams with a little arm extension. Williams is just so strong for West Virginia that they can't keep him from getting good position on the glass. And he understands that when a shot comes from the right side of the floor, generally about 70% of the time it's going to kick to the opposite side. And he's just being held and pushed from behind. And so he goes to the line again. One more. Yep. Five for five from the free throw line tonight. And the team is 17 of 18. And you didn't jinx him. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the announcer <laughs> jinx. With that first bounce, I thought, uh, He's yeah, coming yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought, too. 48-45. What happened? Blood on his Blood ear? Blood on his ear, yes. Okay. Now let's take a look at the brackets here. North Carolina Providence tomorrow on TBS from Raleigh. And Indiana Kentucky on CBS. And the bottom half, Wisconsin is in. From the corner, pull up three. And West Virginia has them playing a little more. You know, they're they're panicking a little bit more. They've lost the control of this game by a touch, Stephen F. Austin. Now they have to, in the next minute or two, they have to regroup. Huge screen set by Williams. And what... C.J. Williams gets it for Stephen F. Austin. Somebody else is going to have to crash the offensive boards. It's probably going to have to be Adrian because they're double-teaming Williams every time a shot goes up. 8.45 to go in this one. Three-point 
Stephen F. Austin lead. That's the margin by which they led at the half. Jumper. Yes! Inside the arc, that's for two. And Johnson with a quick pull up. Carter, Adrian into the corner. Page. Nope. Tough night. Your point to Vern Page is only three of eleven from the floor. There's walk up We're near the eight minute mark. Eight exactly. And remember this there's no count on the dribbling this year. That's right. Walk up. Off balance, got his own putback. I think he may have gotten bumped too on the first shot. But just like that, they regroup in a hurry. Well, you said they should. And had to almost. And that's why the timeout is called because Huggins just realized Bob Huggins 19 for West Virginia and make a note of this West Virginia no timeouts remain Whoa. If that's on Holyfield that will be It's a good set, just wide open, fake a screen up front, challenge. That's it. Yep. Holyfield. That didn't take long. So now C.J. Williams comes back. Holyfield out of the game, five fouls, four points. And you know, it's also Vern, you know, without the timeouts, I, Bob Huggins is, is just playing a hunch. You know, Stephen F. Austin has three left, so really Huggins is going to, they're going to call at least two of those. He's going to get some TV time, you know, media timeouts, so he has plenty of room to work, even though he's wasted all, and I think he's had to use all his timeouts because what he's trying to do is figure out by pushing the button over there, which guys are going to really step it up and play. Well, oh, big time, big time. Yes! Devin Williams off the second free throw miss. Oh, it's nice to be strong and big, isn't it? I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> From the corner for three, Johnson again. <laughs> what a big time shot. Well, he rips it at about 39% on the season, so not surprising. Phillip underneath. Go on. Williams again. Nope. Yes, that's blocked, but there's a foul called as well. Shoot it and rebound. You spread the floor. Even with the numbers, what a good-looking stroke. Stephen F. Austin just spreading the floor on their break when they get by the guys from West Virginia who are trying to press them and trap. So Williams back at the line. Six of six so far. That one was not pretty. Jonathan Holton, the six seven senior from Miami, is on for Nathan Adrian. And Williams shoots one more. They have to change those two guys on the point for their pressing. They're both long, roughly about six seven apiece. Adrian a little tall at 6'9", and the two misses. Wow. They have missed, after hitting 18 of 19, the Mountaineers have missed their last four at the line. Walker. 6.45 to go. That's a little reach-in foul on Dexter Miles, Jr. That's number three for him. And I think that was just walk-ups thought process to put the ball on the floor with a little bit of a purpose just then, knowing that the aggressive fouls are going to go. So every time you dribble, if you're Stephen F. Austin, make sure if you're within 15, 17 feet of the basket that every dribble has a purpose for with it. He's now 12 of 13 at the line. Shoots one more. Notre Dame, Michigan is next. We'll have a full house here for that one. And the winner of this game will take on either Notre Dame or Michigan on Sunday. And they're, more. they're probably thinking, do we have to? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the way these guys play. That's a bad miss. 
Now, uh, Stephen F. Austin, have they fought off the challenge? 6.25 to go. It's, yeah, they pulled it together for the, the two minutes because the prior two minutes or three minutes, West Virginia was making a stand. Look at the field goals for West Virginia. Four for 20 in this half. And they had only one in the last 11 and a half minutes of the first half. Walker. Fade away. Not quite. West Virginia was at 48-45. Here's Miles. That's off the mark. Well, and how about the littlest guy getting a big rebound, especially against two bigs in there for West Virginia. Walker. That's good. Get a guy at the free throw line. And that breaks the pressure even better, especially when you get it to the half court area. And this, five and a half to go. This no five second call could help Stephen F. Austin. Shot clock at two. Remember what Brad Underwood told us yesterday. They called. They got called for a violation 29 times last year. And here is a foul called. This might be a double foul. Double foul is the call. So we're going to take a look as these guys down below start to jockey for oh, position, wow. and it's a, the, the right call. C.J. Williams picks up his third, and Daxter Miles picks up his fourth. It is a double foul. Retain it. But they trail by 11. Yeah, I didn't think it was unnecessary on either of those guys' part. Yeah, but the way this game is going to be played and has been played down the, the next five minutes. Yeah. Somebody just got teed up on the West Virginia bench, I believe. Well, it's called on Bob Huggins. And the technical will be taken by who else? Thomas Walker. So here they are on this side. Here's walk up. 14 of 15 at the free throw line. And Stephen F. Austin has established its largest lead of the night. The West Virginia ball. Up two freebies. Teacher and pupil, Bob Huggins, Brad Underwood, good friends. Said we'll be good friends before, we'll be good friends after, but we're going to compete for 40 minutes. And they got to hope that that team gets them riled up a little bit. West Virginia, that is. Five minutes to go. The Big 12 conference is being tested. And Baylor, Colorado having their problems already, and number three is just under five minutes away from having their problems sealed. Yes. West Virginia fellows up to five. Sean Page. This fourth. Well, well, we'll make a geographical correction. Yeah, I had Colorado there. Sorry, my bad. One who, well, it, uh, you know, they used to be. Now they're proud members of the Pac-12. As a native Coloradan, I think I needed to point that out. You know, Buffaloes have a big following in Steamboat Springs. Walk up one more. He is 16 of 17. 16 of 17 at the free throw. Also, back here is Stephen F. Austin, number two, C.J. Williams, and number 12, Dallas Cameron. It was a three-point difference at the half. Now it's 13. 440 to go. Nope, Williams got it the second time. 
Four and a half. Uh, West Virginia has 18 turnovers. They've only been able to force seven so far. Here's Pinkney. What a wild pass. It's saved. But look at the pressure defensively. They want to call a timeout from the other side. They can't call it from the bench, but he got his attention of a player. Time call, 62-51. Sure, we all picked a 12 seed. Overtime, where Lewis missed a potential game-winning three-pointer. Stephen F. Austin won that game 77-75. Here's Pinkney. Yeah, they've hit this big stage running tonight, haven't they? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. No turnovers in the last 12 minutes. Into the corner. Pinkney keeps going, finds Walker. Nope. Yeah, it was tipped out of bounds. Thomas Walkup tonight. 28 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals. Does he ever know how to get to the line? No, tipped. Oh, ouch, ouch. Tariq Phillip is hit. Hit by Ty Charles. And he's going to exit stage right, I believe. Foul number five on him, and it's the right call every time. You get yourself in foul trouble early. It stops the clock. You get a chance to take two and put it on the board. Dallas Cameron will come in. And Tariq Phillip will be at the line. He is four of four from the free throw line tonight. And all free throws, both teams over the, the 10 each. Burns, so you're going to have a doubles every time somebody fouls. Rotation there, hit that front rim, keep your shoulders going forward. Helps that ball to go in, just barely though. Under four to go. He's so smart with the ball. Yes. Oh, boy. And here's Walker. Boy, they did a nice job. Dallas Cameron. Walker. You know what? Nothing seems to affect him. He, he plays with a calmness. And he absolutely does. He doesn't yeah. change his demeanor at all. Look on his face. He's going for a knockout punch. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Holton has fouled out for West Virginia. Nathan Adrian is back on the floor, number 11. Foul trouble for both teams. Two have fouled out for Stephen F. One for West Virginia, but you see Miles has four, Page has four, Phillip has four, walk-up shoots free throws. Very well. Sure does. Get the idea, he spends a little time after practice every day. There are three shots for a reason. He's 19 of 20. Three and a half to go. West Virginia has made 20 on their own. Carter, Phillip, spins. Oh, no, he didn't get the roll. The one thing that really has impressed me also with Stephen F. Austin Byrne is the fact that they're not tall, and I know that's a foul, but even at the rim, they contest shots. They don't block a lot of them, but they seem to be always around you when you're getting ready to shoot the basketball, and it's really thrown West Virginia off. Philip, disgusted with himself, and his head coach is not too thrilled right now, either. One more. Got it. 
I'm just I'm smiling looking at Brad Underwood, who said we tend to play long games. He's right. Yes. He's right. He was right about a lot of things with his team, and he did look us right in, in front of us and just said, yeah, oh, yeah, expect a long game. We play long games. Coming up on four and a half hours, it feels like the way I'm sure West Virginia feels that way right now. Yes. Buckle up. We've got another game to go. Notre Dame, Michigan will follow this one. Here's Walker. Three on the shot clock. Nope. Rebound, Adrian. 245 on the go. steal. And Walker, quickly. Upstairs. And burn before it can even say it. Watch out. Going the other way. That's a big, another one. Yeah, a big possession for West Virginia. Only down 10. That had a chance of going down maybe 14. One more. Brad Underwood saying spread it out. Jumper. Nope. 2.15 to go. Oh boy, another one. Another one. Three on one, two if they hurry. And a foul. And they're sensing it now. 21 total turnovers. West Virginia has committed, and here we're going to go upstairs for the ride. Defard with the finish, and he's back at the line. Now well, look at the enthusiasm on that lumberjack bench. They're two minutes away from their 21st win, and by far most significant of this season. And I'm starting to think about Michigan's John Beeline and Notre Dame's Mike Bray right now. I'm sure that they are obviously aware of what's going on. The winner gets the winner of this game, which looks like Stephen F. Austin right now. And they've seen West Virginia many more times because of television and being aware of what Huggins does as a coach. How are they going to prepare for this? Did you look at the 14 seed is defeated a three seed 20 times? One more. Williams. One forty five. Back outside, Adrian. Oh, Walker. Two on one. Give it back. Walker. That's the only thing that hasn't gone right for him tonight. All right. Walker hurries his teammates back. And look at this. Ball's not touching the floor. Well, there will be dancing in the streets of Nacogdoches tonight. <laughs> and they're also going to be dancing in the streets of McPherson, Kansas. Toss in Lindsburg, the spillover. Prettiest little town in the Midwest part of the state. And just coincidentally, birthplace of my dad. There you go. Yeah. Very nice. Again, you can just stand out here by rule if you want and dribble away time. Yep. There's no five-second count. And guess what? He's, he's going to do it yeah. until he gets a foul. How about this? How about this? This place is six on the shot right now. Finally, some emotion wow. from Thomas Walker. Rack him up for 33 so far. He's not finished yet. Look at this. Less than a minute to go. My goodness. My goodness. They just keep coming at you. Don't even think about telling them that they're up 16 with no. less than a minute. You'll, you'll insult them if they try that. A little celebration, except for walk up. He's got business to do. Five on the shot clock. Three. 
Lee Cap. Too little, too late. 20.7. Now they can just uh, run out the clock. And the fans in Brooklyn are giving them a nice ovation here. Yeah, it's, you bet. It's their fans who are making some noise, but the fans in Brooklyn are recognizing great fans here in Brooklyn, New York, and way up in the in the Raptors. Yep. All Standing over. ovation. That was the little guy fucking the big guy. 